<laughs> well guys, it's in there. I I kind of wanted to have the camera on for that big whoomp moment. But it didn't seem like it was quite lined up quite right. And I was back to wiggling it. And I lowered it down a little bit. And Austin, I just gave it a little push and the whole thing, it just went boop. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that went forward pretty good. And I checked the splines. I turned the drive shaft back there. And they were locked in. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go up there in the video and show how it's, you know, moving in. And then I'll come back here and video with a big push. And, I, <laughs> and it just went boop. And I walked up there. I'm like, hey, it's all the way in already. Yay. I am a little bit low in the back. I have just a little bit of a gap up here, so I'm gonna crank, take a back about an eighth inch or so, get that nice and tight, and then I'll start my bolts and start feeding my bolts all the way around here. But there we go, you guys can see, we're in there. Our clutch, clutch fork is in there, it's engaged, it's in the correct spot. Um, when you buy a new clutch, they come with a piece of wood in there that holds, that separated, and and uh, keeps that in a spot. So when you put it in there, your fork has room to get behind it. And then the first time you engage the, the clutch, the piece of wood just falls out. It's wood, it, it, even if it gets caught in there, it's just gonna get chewed up. But, um, and, I, and the piece of wood was actually inside the bottom of the bell housing here. And I was actually gonna reuse it, but I forgot it. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna hammer it in there to keep that, but it all worked out. So now, basically, just tighten up all these bolts here, and then I can get my transmission jack out of here and have some room under here. Oof! It's in tight. And then start hooking up all the hundred hoses and wires and all that stuff. So away we go. All right, guys, we are finishing up hooking up wires and hoses and all this different stuff. I need to show you in here how tight it is up in here. Basically, I have a yoke up against my chest. I have to pack a transmission. And it's trying to get all the stuff here. Um, this over here is the cooler. It is uh, the transmission cooler. There's a hose up there. I got to push that down. It gets hooked to the front. And then there's uh, that manifold that I replaced. The other hose gets hooked to that, that one. Um, here's all the lines. This is for the clutch. These are the lines that will go up into the cab for the switcher for the high and low. Right now we need to attach our shifter. So we just slide that on there. Put a little anti-seize in there so that way if it ever has to come back apart it can because it was a kind of a bear getting it apart. She was rusted pretty good. Got this here special bolt. <clears throat> now it's got these little plastic deals that go in here. Let's just fit in there like so. Actually, I think they're different sizes. I want to put it, the head of it over on this side. <clears throat> there we go. Let's get this here little lock nut. What makes this really a special bolt too is the socket is actually a 13 millimeter and the nut is actually a half inch. <laughs> this truck can't seem to make up its mind whether it wants to be metric or standard. It's like every other thing is just different. And if you're going to do it metric, then do it all metric, you know? So you know what to grab. go 
go. Nice and tight, but still rotates, which we need. <clears throat> Gonna hook up our, our clutch here. Fancy quick releases. Get it in there. There we go. Alrighty. Go for that. That line's hooked up. This one's just ends. It just got a plug in it. I don't know where it goes to. That's probably my my uh, dump valve or something. I have to do with my dump valve or something. Who knows? Oh, there goes my heater. Start hooking up all our cables. Now we can install our remote grease fitting. It's right here. Except I have the running end that goes to the other end. And you can see where this screws on to right here. It screws on to that little fitting up there. So basically what we need to do is reach up in there and try to thread it on. There we go. <clears throat> then we just use these, uh, I think they call them craw foot wrenches. Let's see how it, see you can put it up in there and then you put it on the nut back there. I got the wrench backwards. My ratchet just died. I think it did. Let's 
See, and then you can get in there like so. And see, you use a ratchet like so. You can put it on there, and then there are places you can't get a wrench. There we go. Now I'm going to put the cover back on here because it only had one bolt and I want to make sure the bolt I grabbed is right. It's not some metric thread or something. But the way that you tighten or adjust the clutch, you can see this right here. See that big nut right there right where my finger is pointing there? That's the adjustment nut on the clutch. And there's an arrow right on here pointing in this way. So you tighten this way. That's the way that you tighten the clutch. Um, <clears throat> and it needs to be adjusted a little bit because there's no free play. Free play is when you press on the clutch pedal. The clutch pedal will go down about an inch, inch and a half. Some, some people do them two, two and a half inches. Um, it's that little bit that you press down and it does nothing. There's nothing to it. There's no clutch release, nothing. You need to have that because that gives you a little bit when you put your foot on it. Not every time that it's disengaging the clutch. And if you're just like going through traffic, you need to set your foot out, whatever. But the thing is, is when it's adjusted right, then the clutch brake will work. And so this one is not. This one has no free play. That's why I have no clutch brake. But I just want to make sure I got the right bolts. And I don't want to lose the bolts. So I'll just put them back up in there. <clears throat> Every one of these little inspection covers I've ever worked on the truck... They're always missing a bolt. I don't know why. It seems like that's the way they come, is only one bolt. So I dug up this. It's a little longer than the other one, but there's plenty of room behind there. I got full of dirt and everything, but yeah, it's the same thread. We're just going to leave those loose though, because <clears throat> I'm going to adjust the clutch later, so I'm going to need to get back in there. I think that we can uh, first remove my jack. What that does is, um, so it gave me a little extra room on top of the transmission. That's why I put that in there. Ugh, that was my knee. So I had an unhooked airline. So when I unhooked the airlines, I lost all my air. And that cab dropped on, didn't give me no room on top of her.
guess let's put this uh, oil pan in. Um, basically, what you want to make sure you do, well, I don't, you don't have to do what I say. <laughs> I'm just showing you guys things that I do. Um, you need to use some kind of RTV. Um, these, these oil pan gaskets and stuff like this, you don't use RTV on it. But right here with this flywheel housing meets the block and then up in the front, there's another, there's another front plate that meets the block. There's a gap here. There is a gasket in between there, but <clears throat> there's always kind of a lip right there. So you always want to put some RTV right in the corners. You want to put a Goober RTV right there on that. I like this stuff. This is called the right stuff. Um, it's per from Permatex. It's a uh, black one minute gasket. Well, the problem with this, you only use a little bit, the rest of the can is junk. <laughs> get the oil pan and the gasket da, da, da. well here's the problem that i found guys putting this engine back together i had the oil pan tipped on this bucket sitting over there for about a day and a half while i was working on everything getting the last couple inches drained out of it and i found this this is all chunks of aluminum so i sent this here video it was a short little video i shot on my phone sent it to the boss and said what do we want to do and he said put it together and i think we need to get it in and get this thing looked at all right Basically, you can just try to hold it on both sides. Kind of line up the gasket the best you can. going to use my knee I guess get moved on me Gonna go around and I have it on a low setting and I'm not going to um, I'm not gonna wrap on it I'm just gonna run them up to that's go a little faster now. just to get them up there I'm not sitting here cranking on each one forever We are all completed with Big Blue. 
Um, didn't get everything I wanted to get done, but hey, vacation's over. Time to go back to work. <laughs> I do have my bucket of spare parts, you know, any good mechanic, you know. They always tell you, you end up with spare parts at the end. Just as long as you don't have ones that need. I mean, I got this. Um, oh, I put a new one of those on. I don't need that anymore. I'll throw that in the scrap pile. Got this here elbow. Mm. I still, I just, this one here questions me. I don't know where this goes. I can't figure it out. I, I can't remember where I got it from, where I took it out of, but I can't, I just, you know, it's kind of big. I don't know. Seems like I remember taking it out. Oh, well. We'll see if it runs without it. But I hope that everyone out there is having themselves a great day, a great night when you are watching this. And if you are not, you can get all greasy and dirty just like me. That's always fun. But we can always try it again tomorrow. I'll catch you guys later. See y'all.